Uh, here we are. Thank you very much. I didn't want to miss th this very slide. So thank you very much to my dear colleagues, and I welcome everyone, this dedicated and devoted audience who is during like the last uh, panels for today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, to start with, I would like to congratulate the two republics, the Republic of Kazakhstan and the Republic of Tatarstan with uh, public holidays that were yesterday on the 30th of August. So I wish, huh? and Turkey also. Wow, you see how very much symbolic <laughs> during this conference while we discuss higher education, the public uh, holidays of the Silk and road initiative countries are on the way. So as you look at the map, you will see between Russia and China, the ninth largest country in the world. We boast the area, the geographical area, but China is the fourth largest and Russia is the first largest country in the world. Kazakhstan became part of the Silk Road branch and the 6 AD, according to the data. But little has changed since that time. We are still bridging Europe and Asia. Um, as far as you can see from the slides, since the dawn of its independence, Kazakhstan has been thinking how to increase its logistic potential, how to build the capacity on it. And you see that through the national initiatives as well as through the international initiatives when Kazakhstan was chairing OECD, uh, we were promoting this idea. Kazakhstan has always been perceived uh, as a peacekeeping and peace building partner. And first we earned this image when after the collapse of the USSR, we refused from being the nuclear power, we refused from nuclear weapons, and we decided to build on some other achievements to be respected for and to build mutual trust and tolerance with our partners, again, regionally and internationally. So as we are at the Times Higher Education Forum and this renowned university, we speak on higher education uh, uh, on its challenges, on its current situations, on its future. And we need to say that the Republic of Kazakhstan is also uh, on the way through the extensive reforms and modernization agenda. So much has been done and quite recently the law has been accepted on giving more freedom, more autonomy to the universities to make them be more entrepreneurial and seek for their own ways towards excellence. So partner, our, our partners uh, are all like, uh, are all around the world. I, I, I even can't think of an example who can't be the partner of Kazakhstan. And I think that's in the essence of our hospitality, of our generosity and of our being patient and building the construct, constructive dialogues. So uh, China is our significant uh, partner and again as you can see from the statistics from the data we help China to achieve its ambitions in tapping to the markets in cutting the time of the delivery of its goods to approach its clients all over the world and at the same time China is also very important for us in terms of some imports in terms of uh, other geopolitical collaboration. Uh, just within a few years, uh, well, uh, the previous speaker, uh, like said, uh, the professor from Tsinghua University, that we shouldn't be fussy about BRI, but I think any kind of national and regional policies have this or that reflection, they echo back on what we do in higher education. And I'm pretty much sure that it's thanks to BRI and uh, Silk and Road initiatives and the more collaboration that was boosted by it that academia started to react to it and started to seek for ways for more cooperation. Just look at the figure. Within a very short period of time up till now, we have almost a half increase in, student, in our students' influx to China. The Chinese influx to, uh, to Kazakhstan is a little lower, but we hope 
it's still like some little years, maybe decades, as you said, and we will be on equal terms here. So I represent Tehran University. This is a private non-profit university, and I've been surrounded through all these days by uh, great research universities uh, with a profile in medicine and technology. We do not enjoy huge uh, governmental investments, uh, though we do know that to build world-class university, the government should support excellence, should have some drivers in the sector. And I would like to share our experience, how existing in this situation of our legal entity, we proceed through building our way to excellence. When many speakers during these days were sharing their opinions and ideas, um, were repeatedly saying, you know, there are more answers than questions, I would rather argue here. The answers are in the air. And I have just put down the key phrases from the key speakers uh, who have been on the stage during these days. And I'm sorry, however ambitious it sounds, I, fi I find out that we are doing all these things. So we are seeking to stand out. We have multi-profile, uh, multi-mission university. We want to marry or to bring together academia, business, and government. We don't want to have cosmetic transformation as director of Kazan Federal University said, because if you want to build long-lasting relations at the market with your students, with your partners, you need to build the pillars that will bring your image on the surface. So just some tangible examples. Um, when a couple of years ago we were seeking how to be, how to go on, um, like how to be afloat among all these icebergs in the ocean of higher education with all its challenges, we decided to follow uh, the philosophy of the uh, university with a slant on innovation and entrepreneurship. We started to seek for some associations, uh, associations on entrepreneurship among the universities, and we didn't find it even in Russia. Uh, it, it did exist somewhere in Siberia, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in Tomsk University. They were the pioneers who invited Henry Itzkovitz to start the dialogue, to start the conversation in Russia on the entrepreneurial universities and how they could develop and drive the economics. So we contacted the Triple Helix Association directly. We wrote the plan, we showed our potential, and we were entitled to be the chapter of Triple Helix Association in Kazakhstan, uh, having the profile with a focus on economics and humanities, we understand that we can't boast with technologies, with patents, with inventions, but we can bring the academia together. We can bring the many stakeholders together to start the interactions that would trigger and launch everything. So as far as you can see, we have Bloomberg Laboratory at our university, and we need to say that there are only three Bloomberg uh, terminals in Central Asia at universities. Three of them are in Kazakhstan, and one of them is in Tehran University, showing how we invest to build the competencies of our students. Our partners are in the avant-garde of our national uh, economy who are building the modernization who are contributing to the uh, economy 4.0. Well, I hope you can see it on the slide that we were thinking about how to, how to help our students uh, to become more entrepreneurial, to become more innovative. Yes, when, when you study at the University of Technology, you invent. But when you study at the university where you study marketing and finance, you need to learn how to commercialize and to customize these inventions to turn into innovations. If the scientists do not meet with entrepreneurs, we can hardly speak about any kind of uh, progress uh, in this way. Okay, I'm finishing up. Uh, as I said, China is a very important partner. And yes, I believe that BRI gave a new impulse for us to seek for the dialogue, 
uh, to seek for more collaboration. These are just few examples with whom we met quite recently and we are now the partners of different Silkwake unions. We are proud to say that this year Chinese students come to our university to study some programs to build their competencies in Russian, which I suppose is also a novelty and it's emerged thanks to BRI. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm actually on my last slide and I decided to finish it like this. Um, one of our colleagues said, Russia is in the renaissance of higher education, not only building its military potential, but also in the renaissance of its higher education. I believe that we are now uh, f uh, like leaving or witnessing the age of great alliances come back. Before, great alliances were built for military purposes. Now we build alliances for economic purposes, and these economic purposes trigger different processes at the universities. It is now our uh, voice, it is now our right to be in this process, to map the trends, to map the needs, to help the governments, because the universities have their social responsibility, not only to think about academic capitalism issues, but also to, to, to boost the regional and economic development. And I believe that Asian universities have all the potential to change the trends in excellence. Let's see in two decades after the summit, mm -hmm. let's meet and discuss what has happened. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much.